get the edge and an unfair advantage by listening, learning, and implementing the latest and greatest tips from our show. If you're a newbie in the real estate industry, whether in brokerage, sales, investing, or the entire business altogether, we will help you crush it and even sting the competition. We operate on the abundance mentality, so even though some of us love to compete, there is plenty enough to go around, hence the birth of our show. Marguerite, Anthony, good afternoon. How's it going, guys? Fantastic. Um, nice to see you again, Joe. Anthony. Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> Anthony, it looks like you're in a nice Hi. house. I, that's a different Love kind it. of house that I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm driving. Multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's on the move. Yeah. yeah. There He's you on go. Onto my next. Onto my next appointment. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are we working on today, guys? Well, if people are considering farming as a source of business, I think we want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, knowing their farm. Yeah, I think that's a great topic, Marguerite. Let's talk about that because I think there's a good number of agents that want to like specialize in their farm or just work in their backyard, literally, you know, neighbor to neighbor. Um, so let's talk about understanding and working your farm. Sound good? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's right, good. Dope. Ladies first. Go ahead, Marguerite. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot first. Okay, no problem. I mean, we have talked in the past about um, farming, and I think it's really important, um, you know, to be, become a part of the community you're farming, even if you don't live there. I mean, knowing your farm, it, you know, there's there's a, there are a lot of components to knowing your farm. I mean, you need to know the neighborhoods. You need to know the schools, the businesses in the area. You need to know what is going on, kind of be in the pulse of you know, what's happening in the neighborhood, including, you know, what homes are selling for, how, what the time on the market is. Um, but I think it goes beyond just that. And when we say know your farm, we mean know who lives there, um, know what's important to those people. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, no, Marguerite, I, I totally agree with you, you know, and I'll, I'll share a little story about uh, when I started in real estate, I was, pretty lucky, I would say. I mean, the timing couldn't have been more perfect. So if you're watching this show or listening to the podcast, and if you're familiar with Chula Vista, uh, the very, very first home that I ever bought was 205985 I still remember the price today. Wow. And it wow. was <laughs> a five-bedroom, a five-bedroom, wow. and I was one of the first in all of Otay Ranch. Oh, okay. good. Wow. So I was one of the very, very first home. It was a Centex home de developer. And by accident or luck, I, I, I landed in the right spot and I started to see all these homes go up. And it was this, this developer and this developer and this developer. And what I started to do was I just started popping in these new construction homes and I would take their brochures and look and study the model of the home, know the models, know the square footage. And it just started compiling because if you know Otay Ranch or Chula Vista, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, you have Macmillan Homes, Lomas Verdes, you have Winding Walk, you have Rolling Hills Ranch, you have, you, you know, it just started exploding. And so um, I would just say if you're in the audience, um, it, you're lucky if you're in a new construction uh, development kind of neighborhood, pop into these, these random new construction offices. If you're not, some of that research could be done online too. So you don't have to go door to door if the, the, the community's already developed. If you do a little bit of research, you could probably find out those homes online and then really study some of uh, that market data that's out there. I think that's really a good suggestion. A lot of the um, develop, home developments that maybe are even a little bit older do have floor plans that you can access online or through the HOAs that exist in those areas. And, um, you know, people do look for specific floor plans. So, you know, your ability to talk intelligently about the floor plans that exist out there are very important. And, you know, and you knowing the configuration, you know, where the single level homes are, you know, which homes are closer to schools. Um, 
I think that's all good, good suggestions. Absolutely. What do you think, Anthony? Yeah, I know. I know you should know at least like uh, what just sold, what's coming soon, you know, because you don't want to get caught up guard asking, <laughs> you know, you don't know how much the, the house sold down the block. If they ask you, you know, you should have your data and when you're farming because because I door knock, so you should at least know uh, what's going on and uh, get involved with the community, you know, the church or whatever, you know, that's very important. You gotta put, put your face out there, especially if you're farming that area. Otherwise, they don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> right. That, well, that's true. That's absolutely yeah. true. Even blood drives or something like that. You know. Well, you do do things for the create events for the community, participate in existing events. You know, volunteer. You know, get your get your finger on the pulse of what's happening. You yeah. know, and get involved with schools. Maybe another thing you guys could probably do if uh, you're wanting to learn your community, your neighborhood you know, maybe join the local chamber of commerce. You know, if you're, if you're in real estate, you got to meet some people and the movers and shakers usually join the chamber of commerce. And then you could be learning about their businesses and you might have or run into a couple of realtors, but I wouldn't even worry about that. I would just get your, your knowledge, your market knowledge down pack and also study the MLS maybe every single day. So you know what's popping up in the market. You know, I do that very frequently. And typically, I'll just do it right on my phone. So I'll use HomeSnap, which is an app that I, I like very much so. And I'll just start popping in there maybe once a day, twice a day, maybe late at night when I'm just laying in my bed. I'm just going to hit HomeSnap. And I'll be like, ooh, there's a home in this neighbor neighborhood that just popped up. And I just, I'm just so addicted to, you know, the data. I don't know if that's something weird or. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it's a, no, that's, it's a good that's very important. That's yeah, important. very important. <laughs> I would also suggest that when homes are open, um, that you're popping in and to see them in person. There you go. Makes, makes such a big difference when you're talking to people about, you know, what's out there and having seen it personally, you can talk intimately about it. So that gives you a lot of credibility. Yeah, yeah. Open houses. You're absolutely yeah. right. You know, if you're driving around the neighborhood and you see open houses on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever day during the week, pop in there and yep. ask the price of the home. Take a look. I mean, there's your free look, your free peek. And I actually sometimes prefer those over what we call the broker caravans, because sometimes, you know, these local realtor boards that you're a member at, they have broker caravans. I remember going to those you know, partly because of the free food, <laughs> but <I'll tell> you <laughs> what, like, I mean, you're looking at two, three hours or more commitment of your time. You know, I think that's a long, hard way to study your market and the inventory that's going on. Absolutely. But if you don't have any other business going on, that's a great first start. You get to meet other agents, you get to meet uh, service providers, and then you get to go in and see the houses, you know, firsthand. So absolutely, absolutely. A while back, Marguerite, I was working in La Jolla and man, those homes were phenomenal. And the brokerage caravans were insane. A lot of these people in uh, La Jolla, a lot of these homes that they were selling, they were second homes and they were like 7,000 square feet, 12,000 square feet. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's the niche I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> one one sale of those a year isn't too shabby, Anthony. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> well, you better you better move then. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. There you go. <laughs> what else for for knowing your market, knowing your farm? What other ideas could you throw out to the folks here? Well, I mean, we talked a little bit about participating in, you know, in any events that go on, know, know what's happening, you know, know about the issues that are affecting the community itself. So, you know, get involved, really. Also, you could create your own events. Yeah, you know, in your yeah. house, your backyard, you know, that would, that would be something else too. I know we did, we did a few of them already, me and Joe. Yeah. And uh, it, it, that brings in a lot of people too. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always people looking at these meetup groups. If right. you're open to host a meetup group and it doesn't have to be real estate related, you know, and this is where you meet other people and learn about, 
you know, their market, their home, their business. And, and that's a great way to do some, uh, I, I would probably lean more of that into a, what we call social farming versus regular farming because you're socializing. So yeah, not a bad approach, Anthony. Yeah, I wear your EXP shirt. There you go. <laughs> Great idea. Well, and, and we've Just talked about way. this before, but I think when you're farming and you're getting to know your farm, I mean, you have to come at it in a circular fashion. So you need you need to come at it from all different sides um, and just totally learn everything, you know, be a student of your neighborhood. No doubt. No doubt. And, and another suggestion, guys, if you're um, taking notes here or learning more about how to uh, work this, I would say visit your local city assessor's office, the permitting office to see what who's building, who's requesting permits to build, who's coming in there, whether it's a, a big company, a big box, uh, a Costco, a Walmart, uh, one of these real big companies, that should be really good too. And, um, you know, especially here in San Marcos, there's a lot of construction going on. You know, they're setting up a new, uh, so many new streets, they're revamping up, putting bridges, you know, they're building new parks. You know, this is something that if somebody's transferring in, to that neighborhood, they probably want to know about that. Hey, where's the schools at? Where's the parks at? Where's, you know, where, where, where are we going to go ride our bikes or hike mountains or whatever? So you want to be familiar with what's going into the neighborhood. Check out the city permitting office. Good idea. And there's a That's general a plan idea. and kind of a master plan for a lot of communities. So knowing what's, um, you know, coming ahead in the area is, you know, helpful. Absolutely. Makes great, you great knowledgeable. Tip. Great tip. Any other last comments, questions that uh, we want to ask each other or share with the group? No, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, we, I'm good. We, we could open it up and, and take questions. And maybe well, that's we a valid can... point, Marguerite. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we talked about our webinar coming up um, that we're going to be hosting here very, very shortly. So, guys, if you see the link or want some more questions, feel free to reach out because I think that's part of our movement next is to maybe start hosting a few more open live webinars for people to participate, raise their hand, ask some live questions. I think that would be great. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so anything else we could share with the group? Yeah. Um, I am good for today on this topic. How about you, Anthony? Yeah. No, I'm good. That was uh, very informative. Again. <laughs> no? Any, any last minute words from uh, Joe? No, I Oops, think I'm Joe. good too. I think that was plenty. Okay. Well, then I guess uh, we'll we'll move on here. Um, <laughs> That's what I get you, so, yeah, I was just going to say, how do you get, how do we get a hold of you, Joe? <laughs> All right, I'll go first. Let's mix it up. 877 797 877-794-5227. And my name is Joe Mendoza. Feel free to reach out, guys. All right, Anthony, how do, how can uh, they reach out to you? Uh, Anthony Verzi, uh, at, at trust. <laughs> You can call me at 559-681-2398. Call or text or anthony.berzy at exprealty.com. All right. And I am Marguerite Apostolos uh, with the Marguerite Apostolos team. You can reach me at 619-405-4958. Call or text. Um, go to my website, please. Take a look, marguerite.apostolosteam.com. And um, you can reach me from there. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, we look forward to seeing you next time and hopefully at our live webinar. Take care, guys. Yes. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 Thanks again for listening to the Newbie RE Show. Listen, enjoy, subscribe, and share the Newbie RE Show. Viewers and listeners are advised that any views, opinions, comments, or examples on the show are strictly for entertainment purposes only. No content on the show is intended to offend any religion, organization, company, or individual. There are no promises of results to listeners and viewers of our show. Actual results may vary. Viewer discretion is advised.